Before we get into today's game, I want to talk about the sponsors for my channel. Card Conduit is the best way to sell your unused magic cards. Whether you've got a box of unsorted bulk, or a complete and alphabetized set, there's a great option for everyone. With a payout averaging 19% better than using any one buy list, and that's after fees are applied, you can rest assured you'll get the best bang for your buck. If you're a skeptic like me, their easy customer service and detailed reports make the whole interaction transparent and safe. And if you use the affiliate link in the description below, or the promo code MTGMUDSTA, you'll save 10% off their fees. And 401 Games, Canada's one-stop shop for trading cards, board games, and hobby supplies. Not to mention an easy to use and great online buy list. And if you use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, your first purchase of MTG sealed and singles will be 5% off. And Dragon Shield, the strongest sleeves for your strongest deck. So be sure to use the code MUDSTA or the affiliate link down below to save 5% on your next order. Today's patron shoutout goes to Wes Allen. Thanks Wes for supporting me through Patreon. Hey gang and welcome back. Today, Max, Mika, and Ian have joined me, and the prompt for today's game was play your most punchy base deck. Max is obliged with Mazzy, keeping All That Glitters, Danitha Capuchin, Paragon, Plains, Temple of Abandon, Command Beacon, Path of Ancestry, and a Rootbound Crag. Mika has kind of taken the prompt seriously, but in his own special way, playing Pramicon, and he wants to direct where the punchies go. He keeps Path to Exile, Restoration Angel, Aurelius Fury, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, Temple of Enlightenment, Soul Ring, and Azorius Signet. Ian wants to punch as hard as he possibly can with Danitha Capuchin, Paragon, Keeping Generous Gift, Michiko's Reign of Truth, Spirit Mantle, Marble Diamond, Two Planes, and Winds of Wrath. Last but not least, I am playing the patron-submitted General Marholt deck, and if I'm going to be swinging my creatures, I want to pump them if they get blocked, Keeping Infiltration Lens, Mosswort Bridge, Root Reaver Druid, Forest, Mountain, Lure, and a Cragpound Pathway. Maximus wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a Tap Path of Ancestry. I follow his example, playing a Tap Moss Warp Bridge and hiding away a card. Mika likes this so much he plays a Tap Temple of Enlightenment and scries one and passes. Never one to follow the trend, Ian just plays a Plains and passes. Max has a tap Temple of Abandon, scrying one and passing after that. I play a mountain and pass. Mika's stalled on lands, and he pays one white for a land tax, which he just drawn. He passes to Ian after that. Ian's got a plains and pays two for a tap Marble Diamond. Max draws and plays a plains, casting Death a Capuchin Paragon, which insults Ian since it comes out before his commander does. After that, he passes. I've got a forest return, and decide to help the table out. I cast a Root Weaver Druid, and surprisingly, everyone agrees to it. We go to find some basics, with Mika, Ian, and Max giving me one of them, and with nothing else, I pass. Surprisingly, Mika gets his land tax trigger on his upkeep, going to find three basics to hand, and then draws. He plays an island, and then casts Soul Ring. He then follows up with Teferi. He upticks Teferi, drawing a card, and getting a delayed trigger to untap two lands on his end step. He then passes, doing so, and we move to Ian's turn. Ian's got a Plains, and he then casts his own Danitha Capuchin. And once she's out, suits her up with an ethereal armor. He then plays Michiko, Reign of Truth, and passes. Max's turn has him playing a rootbound crag, and he casts Mazzy. He then follows up with all that glitters on my Root Reaver Druid. Going to combat, Danitha goes at Teferi for two, and knocks it down to three loyalty counters. He passes after that. I draw and play a Crowd Crown Pathway. I then cast the Reaver Cleaver, and equip it onto my Root Weaver Druid. Going to combat, I swing the Druid at Teferi, but Mika is unfortunately ready with Path to Exile. I go to find a Forest from the Path, and all that glitters gets exiled thanks to Mazzy, and I then pass to Mika. Mika triggers his land tax on his upkeep, getting three basics, and then drawing. He plays a Plains, and is able to cast Pramicon, and as it comes in, chooses left. He then casts an Azorius Signet, and once that's out, upticks to Fairy. 
he gets to draw a card, and he gets his delayed trigger at the end of turn, untapping two lands. Ian draws her turn, and upticks Michiko's Reign of Truth in his main phase. He then plays a Plains, and enchants Danatha with Spirit Mantle, and he goes to combat. He can only swing in Max's direction, which he does so, and Max takes 9 thanks to its protection from creatures. With nothing else, Ian passes. Max's turn has him casting a Bothersome Quasit. He then recasts the All That Glitters from Exile, and puts it onto his Danatha. Max then gets to goad Pramacon with the Quasit, so it can't block, and he then goes to combat. Max swings Danatha at me, and I take the hit, and he moves to a second main phase. He follows up by playing a Sunpetal Grove, and passes. My turn has me playing Nykthos, and I then cast my commander, General Marholt. I follow up with Garruk's Uprising, drawing a card as it enters, and then pass. Mika's upkeep has him getting more lands from the land tax, and he draws for turn. He plays a mountain for turn, and then casts Jeskai Ascendancy. He then once more upticks to Fairy, drawing a card, and getting his delayed trigger, untapping two lands during his end step. Ian draws and then flips Michiko's Reign of Truth during his main phase. He then plays a Roadside Reliquary, and he casts a Moon Blessed Cleric. He goes into his library, and finds his own copy of All That Glitters, and puts it on top. He then follows up with a generous gift, and targets Pramacon, but Mika responds, flickering it with a Restoration Angel, but as it comes back in, keeps the same directions. Going to combat, Ian once more swings Danatha at max for 6, and he still can't block. After that, Ian passes, with Max casting Spider Climb on his unstep, targeting Marholt. This gets him a goad trigger on the Restoration Angel, and he has to sacrifice it at the end of Ian and he has to sacrifice it at the end of Ian's turn and puts it to exile. Max draws and plays a command beacon. He then plays a Stetson Champion. Going to combat, Danatha goes at me again, and I take another five. In the combat cleanup step, Max flashes in the Spider Climb and targets Marholt again, so he has to sacrifice it at the end of turn, but this triggers Stetson Champion, giving it a plus one plus one counter, and draws him a card, plus he gets to goad something again, choosing Pramacon. In his second main phase, Max then casts a Min Miss Containment, and he puts it onto Pramacon. It's now a treasure, and Max then moves through his phases, sacrificing the Spider Climb, and putting it into exile thanks to Mazzy. I draw and equip the Reaver Cleaver onto Marholt, and then cast Infiltration Lens, and suit it up onto Marholt as well. Going to combat, before declaring attacks, Max flashes in Spider Climb on Marholt, which gets him a Stetson Champion trigger, drawing a card and putting a counter onto it, and he gets to goad Ian's Danatha. I then swing my commander at Teferi. Teferi gets taken out, and I get to make 7 treasure tokens. I then pass, and during my end step, Max sacrifices Spider Climb, and Miki decides to use this as a chance to cast Valakut Awakening, bottoming some cards, and then drawing that many, plus one. Mika gets two lands off of land tax, and then draws for turn. He plays an island, and he goes to combat, swinging the Restoration Angel that's been goaded at Ian. Max flashes in Spider Climb again though, this time enchanting Ian's Danatha to give it reach, and he goads Marholt. Ian then moves to blocks, and blocks the Restoration Angel, taking it out. After combat, Mika then sacrifices his treasured Pramacon to make some mana and recast it. It comes in, and he still picks going to the left. Mika then plays a Blind Obedience, and loots away a card with the Jeskai Ascendancy trigger. It then comes in, and he passes, and during his end step, Max sacrifices Spider Climb again. Ian draws for turn, and plays the All That Glitters on his Danatha. Going to combat, Danatha is goaded, but the only person it can attack is Max, so he swings it at him. Unable to block, Max goads the Moon Blessed Cleric with the Spider Climb, but then gets taken out. Ian then passes, and during his second main phase, Mika casts Teferi's Time Twist, and blinks Pramacon, which comes back during Ian's end step. This time, Mika chooses everyone has to attack to the right. I draw and cast Kolga, which as it comes in, fights and kills Pramacon.
I then activate the Moss Warp Bridge, casting Hunter's Prowess and targeting Marholt. I then go to combat and swing my commander at Mika, dealing 8. He takes 8, I draw 8, and I make 8 tap treasure tokens. I then cast Nyeth and pass turn. Mika gets another land off the land tax trigger and then draws her turn. He plays an island and casts Clever Impersonator, and it comes in as a copy of the Moonblessed Cleric. This has Mika going into his library and finding Psychic Impetus and puts it on top. He then plays Biden of Thassa, getting the Jeskai Ascendancy, drawing a card and discarding a card, which we know is the Impetus. Mika then casts it onto Danitha and passes. During his end step, I cast Cross and Grip and blow up the Psychic Impetus to avoid getting attacked. Ian draws and cracks his Roadside Reliquary, having met both requirements and drawing two. He then casts Wards of Light on Danitha, choosing green, and then plays Benevolent Blessing, choosing white. Going to combat, Ian swings Danitha and the Portrait of Michiko at Mika. Mika chump blocks Portrait, but still takes the hit from Danitha because it has protection from creatures. With nothing else, Ian passes. I draw and play a forest, and then go to combat. I pay for Nyas' ability, doubling Marhold's power, and then swing it at Ian, and Kolga goes at Mika. Kolga's on attack trigger blows up the Blind Obedience, and Ian has to block with all of his creatures. This gets Marhold two of his own's triggers, getting plus six plus six, and I draw two from the Infiltration Lens, and then one from Nyeth. I don't want to lose my commander though, so I cast Gaia's Gift on Marhold, untapping it, giving it Indestructible, and a plus one plus one counter. I then continue, channeling Beseju, and destroying all that glitters. We then move to damage, and Ian takes 6 damage from trampling over. In my post-combat main phase, I then cast a Tree Shaker Chimera, and pass. Mika has no more basics for the land tax, having failed to find, and just draws. He plays a Flagstones of Trocare, and then casts Whirlwind of Thought, getting a Jeskai Ascendancy trigger, and drawing a card, and discarding a card. He then plays a Conjurer's Closet, drawing a card again, and discarding a card again, but with nothing else, has to pass. Ian's turn has him playing a Plains, and he casts Winds of Wrath. I respond, bouncing Nyeth to my hand, to make Kolga indestructible, and the board then gets wiped. And with a Tree Shaker dying, I get to draw three cards. Ian then goes to combat, swinging Danith at me for seven, which I take. He passes after it connects. I draw and play a Mountain. I then pay four for a Beast Whisperer, and once that's out, follow up with Nyeth again, drawing a card. I then move the Reaver Cleaver onto Kolga, and I go to combat. I get my Nyeth trigger, paying to double Kolga's power, and forcing it to be blocked, which I swing at Ian. My on attack has it destroying the Spirit Mantle, and Ian has to block with Danitha. Before damage, I cast Hunter's Insight onto Kolga, and 10 damage then tramples over Danitha, and I draw 10 and make 10 treasure tokens. After combat, I play a Blurash Taunter, and then cast Nature's Lore, going to find a forest. Once that's out, I cast Fiend Lash and pass to Mika. Mika draws and plays a Plains, and then recasts Pramicon, choosing right. Mika then passes, and during his end step, I cast Peace Within and target Pramicon. Mika's ready with an answer though, and flashes in Archangel Avacyn to save it, and we then move to Ian's turn. Ian draws and plays Archon of Sun's Grace. He then goes to combat, swinging Danitha at Mika, who is able to block with Avacyn since I've destroyed all of his protection from creature enchantments. With nothing else, Ian passes. I draw and play an untapped stomping ground, taking two. I then cast a Blazing Sunsteel and equip the Fiend Lash onto Kolga and then go to combat. I get my Nyeth trigger, paying to double his power, and I swing Kolga at Ian, destroying the Ethereal Armor when it attacks, and he soaks up what he can with Danitha, but still takes 20. After combat, I move the Blazing Sunsteel and Fiend Lash to my Brash Taunter and then activate it to fight Kolga. I have three damage triggers from the Brash Taunter and its equipment, 
and I deal 18 to Mika to take him out, and use the two other triggers to deal 36 to Ian. Once that's done, I cast a show-stopping surprise, targeting Kolga to have it deal 18 again to Brash Taunter. This gives me three triggers of 18 damage, which is enough Taunter triggers to take Ian out, and I win the game. Game review time. This game was 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 27 seconds, and it was the last game of the night, which is why I told everyone that we should play our most aggressive and combat-focused decks. I think General Marholt is exactly that, and it was really fun. I love getting to play things like Brash Taunter and Blasphemous Act, so that showstopper was just insane. It feels kind of like Chandra's Ignition, only a little bit better and a little bit worse. Instant speed at 5 mana is huge if you have a massive creature, but it also doesn't hit players, so you know, you can't kill people with Blightsteel Colossus. Mika's Pramicon deck did fit the bill, kind of. Um, he has ways of pumping up other people's creatures, like we saw with the Impetuses. But for the most part, it's more focused on directing where those people go and those creatures go. So it wasn't exactly on theme. Unfortunately, that caused a bit of conflict at the table, which is why people were attacking him so early on, and understandably so. His deck was a bit more controlly, but ultimately it didn't pay off because everyone saw through it and went for him. Danatha was particularly scary. Um, having all of those ways to basically grant his commander protection from creatures, meaning he was always going to get through, was aggressive. The ethereal armor also added up a lot of points of damage, not to mention that lifelink attached to the commander itself was really, really helpful to Ian. Mazzy, on the other hand, did kind of well. I think once Max had the Stetison Champion out and he was getting some draw, he was really getting going, and the Bothersome Quasit did a lot of work, although most of that was negated, unfortunately, because Pramicon was forcing people to attack other opponents and not just any direction that they want to go. Uh, the downside of that being also that he sat directly left of Ian meant that when Mika had Pramicon out, Ian had to attack Max, only Max. And that just led to a lot of commander damage very quickly, which, which took him out of the game, basically. Overall, I think the decks went pretty well. Considering there was blue in it, there weren't that many bounces or counter spells, so that was kind of fun to see. And there's a decent amount of board wipes, which I think a lot of people were hoping for and look for better games when they do that. This was probably the last time I'll be playing General Marholt. I think I'm cycling into a new patron submitted deck, so look forward to that in the future. Otherwise, just remember, friends are opponents you haven't eliminated yet. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, but it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.